Hey guys, it's Matt from Billet Pro Shop, and I'm here to revive our YouTube channel. After I don't know how many years of not posting too much, I decided to uh, get started again on this. So I thought I'd do a little series on Holly EFI. Um, we use Holly on a lot of uh, our cars, our customers' cars, and I often get a qu the question about, you know, um, what do I need to look for after a run? How do I open my log? How do I interpret the, the information? So I'd like to, you know, give you guys a little bit more info on that and uh, hopefully make you guys more independent as far as uh, that goes. Before we jump into this, I just want to mention that this may be a little basic for um, those that are familiar with the system. I just want, you know, to put a baseline out there so everyone's on the same page and then go from there. Maybe, you know, uh, throw in some suggestions in the comments and uh, we can make some more videos on this content. You just made a hit. First thing you want to do is obviously pull the latest log. So what you want to do is go up here to data log and uh, this will be highlighted once uh, you're plugged into your ECU with ignition on. You'll want to click on download and open most recent log file. So this after downloading will automatically open. Um, for demonstration purposes, let me just open up a log here and we'll get started. Next, what you want to do is set your zero time. Uh, it's one of the first things I do. Uh, it helps you situate yourself and see where you are in the run time-wise. So you do that by clicking on the letter Z up here and making sure your cursor is set to right after the trans brake is let off. Uh, that's where I like to set mine. It's maybe not the most accurate, um, but it's within a few thousandths of a second. It's fine for you know, comparing one run to another. So now that that's done, um, let's zoom in on the run here. You hold the left mouse button, highlight the section, and it's going to zoom to your run. So right now I have the RPM selected, so that's what we see on the screen. Um, one thing that you will have to do for the first time is edit views. Now, Holly will give you some base parameters. I like to create my own. Um, it's very easy to do. It's all drag and drop. So normally, you know, you want uh, a drag setup with, you know, RPM, air fuel, compensation, and whatnot. I like to have one for engine health, oil pressure, EGTs, ignition, so we could look at what the timing is doing fueling, and uh, other important ones that you may judge important. One parameter that's fairly important to look at after a run, uh, it's one of the first things you should look at, look at also, is closed loop compensation. Um, you know, I like to stay within 5%. Um, if you see anything above that or below that, you might have some fueling issues. Uh, you might have some wideband issues. You know, it's very important to keep an eye on that because you wouldn't want to burn up that uh, expensive motor of yours. So, yeah, within 5%, you know, it might jump a little bit more than that, but within 5 your fueling is okay. Um, next thing we look at, oil pressure. Uh, see oil pressure I keep in the engine health section. Um, very important to make sure that's above, you know, at least 20 PSI, even 20 I find a little low. But yeah, um, I always look through that after a run. Ignition. Ignition is very important. There's a lot of advanced tables that come and play with this value. So um, what I like to do is put the base timing and the actual ignition timing that we have and overlay it and see exactly what's happening, uh, and making sure that both are following each other, except where you know we have advanced tables playing. Um, over here, we have a launch retard, 
which we can see from the difference here in both curves. But after that, it follows the base timing throughout the whole run. So there's nothing abnormal there. It's doing as we're commanding. You'll want to do the same thing with other parameters. Check your manifold air temp, check your EGTs if you have any, uh, check your coolant temp, you know, make sure everything is within reason. Now, I know I'm being a little brief, but this does take practice. It takes experience. You have to play around with the software. You have to make runs and you have to pull some logs. Now, this video is beginning to be a little bit longer than I anticipated. And um, I think we'll leave it at that. I know, like I said, it's very brief, but uh, I hope it gets you set off on the right foot. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to write it in the comments below. And for the first time ever, I'm going to be saying this, but um, like, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure to comment below uh, for some future videos. What do you guys want to see? What do you want to hear me talk about? What do you want me to explain? Thanks, guys.